Hello, Fat Quarter Shop friends. I'm here to show you a new pattern that we have called Sewing Goodies. And it's with my new wool bundle, the Farmhouse 2 bundle. You could use the Farmhouse 1 bundle also. But we wanted to come up with a couple more fun goodies to make with all those yummy, scrumptious colors of wools. And so in this pattern, um, we designed, I, we, the Royal, we designed a needle case. And I had a lot of fun putting dip four different designs on it. And I kind of had to stop at some point because there was no more room to take a picture of, you know, 18 different needle cases and or needle books. And then I also did a um, scissor case and there's two different designs on that one. And that's a really fun, simple project to do with, uh, with some of those wools. And then I added in this vintage tomato pin cushion. I have a collection of pin cushions and I'm a little bit obsessed with them. And so it was a perfect opportunity to use up some of the wools and also to make one that looks as vintage as I could get it to look. Um, with one of these darling little tiny strawberries hanging off the edge that I'm sure at some point served a practical purpose. Like I'm pretty sure they, uh, you would put emery in there and use it to sharpen your needles. But at this point it's just purely decorative because it's cute. Um, so that's the sewing, goodie, sewing goodies pattern. And I'm going to show you guys how to make some of these things. I'm going to show you guys how to make one of these needle books. Um, they're very straightforward, I promise. I know sometimes some of my students make fun of me. They say, you said that was straightforward. And you're like, you know, it's not straightforward. But it is, this is pretty straightforward. Um, and we're gonna work on this one. They're all identical. The only difference is um, a couple different design choices that you get to make. And then whatever um, little wool applique you decide to put on the front. So um, that's the outside cover. And then the back cover, um, I just did most of them with just two pieces of fabric. But again, design choice. You can do whatever you want in there. And then when you open it up, it has the little pages of the wools in a couple different colors. And this is where you would put all of your needles. And so um, I haven't had time to do this yet, but I will at some point probably embroider like what kinds of needles are gonna be on each set. So, you know, I would put my sharps maybe here. I'd put my applique needles here, my binding needles so that I could just go right to that page and I'd have them all in there because I'm always losing my needles. They're all over the place. It's kind of a hazard. So. That's what we're going to do. And to do that, you're basically going to make the front of the um, of the needle book first. And you can decide what you want to do up here. So you can do like on this one, it shows that you've got a little patchwork back there. That can also be just one piece of fabric. On some of the other ones that you saw um, in the from the pattern, it's just one piece of fabric up there. You can kind of do whatever you want on here. Um, but these are just pieced from little rectangles of fabric and all of the measurements for all of this stuff are in the pattern. Um, so I'm just going to basically show you how it's constructed. So that's the little pieced front that I did on a couple of them. And then the bottom on all of them is the cross weave. And so I would add that to that. And then I would put this little ribbon right on the, basically right on the seam. And you want to sew that right on the edge of one and then right on the edge of the other side, like barely even an eighth of an inch right on the edge. Cause if you bring it in too much, it curls up the edge later and you don't want that. So it's basically, it's just a, it's purely decorative. It's just for fun. You could put any, you could put a vintage ribbon or any other kind of decorative trim that you have. Crochet trim would look super cute on there. If you've got that, um, you could kind of do whatever. That would basically then be the entire front. You have then the spine of the book and then the back of the book. And the back of the book, again, you could do anything. You could piece the whole thing from a patchwork. That would be super cute. Um, or you can just do like here where I've done with the two pieces. So that basically then gets, so this, the front of the book gets sewn to the right side of the spine and the back of the book gets sewn to the left side of the spine. And so that's what you have as your, your basically your main piece. So if you lay this flat, the booklet flat, this is the part that you've just constructed now. Okay. And next I'm going to show you what you need to do to get that quilted and put together with the lining. So in this next step, you'll have pieced all that together and you're going to take that piece as one and you're going to put it on a piece of fusible fleece. And, um, that's, you could also do batting. Um, you could also use other products that if you are, you know, a, if you make lots of bags and you have other products that you like, that's great too. I love the fusible fleece um, because it makes it easy. I can press the si this side. It's got the little dots on it. You can feel it with your fingers. That's the sticky side. I mean, it's not sticky now, but that's the side that will stick when you iron it. 
And so it just sticks right to your background. It's a really good weight. It's a little bit heavier than batting, but it's not real stiff. And so it's kind of perfect for this. And so you're going to basically put your whole needle book on there and you're going to then quilt it. You don't need it. You're not going to have a back. That's just going to be quilting the front to the fusible fleece. And so I'm just going to move that over. And so basically, um, you can see on here, I use three different kinds of, um, or maybe just two on this one, two different quilting. I did um, straight cross hatching just on my machine, just straight through the corners of that little patchwork all the way through. Um, you could easily also just do straight lines on that. Um, each of the books that I did, I did something a little bit different on the quilting. It's such a tiny little space that it's a perfect excuse to basically just try out different stitches on your machine and see what they look like when you quilt with them. Um, when I discovered that I, I tried zigzag on one and I found that it was my absolute favorite. And so I take my zigzag stitch and I elongate it and then I flatten it. So it's kind of a long, flat zigzag and it gives it to me, it gives it the appearance of kind of hand stitches. Like if you can see on there, this whole back is basically wide zigzagged again with just cream thread. And then it's also zigzagged here on the front. And I love the way that that feels. On some of the other books um, I did, like on this one, I think I just did in the ditch on the little patchwork and I did diagonal stitching here. I did cross hatch on the back. I did straight line stitching here. I mean, I literally did something a little bit and cross hatch there or diagonal there. I did something a little bit different on every single one. Um, that's straight stitching in the back. On this one, I straight stitched horizontal on the whole thing. And on the back, I did up and down wider stitching. So it was really just, um, it was, I was just having fun. I was doing something a little bit different on each one. So you can do any of those. You can do all of those with your, just your regular machine. You don't even take the feed dogs up. You're literally just stitching straight little lines. If you have a walking foot, you could use it. I didn't. I literally just used my the half, uh, the quarter inch seam foot that I had on my machine to do all of these. It's just a tiny little space. It's not really going to pull a lot. So once you've done that on here, your piece, your, your fleece piece will be a little bit bigger. You can trim it up and it tells you all of that in the pattern, but it, you can, you basically clean it up and trim it up a tiny bit so that it's a nice even shape. At that point, you're going to choose what applique you want, if you want. I mean, it would make a really cute needle case just like that by itself. But since this was an excuse for me to play with my wools, I for sure wanted to put little wool appliques on all of them. And so as we did this little fox face on this one, and we did little ice cream cones with a couple different flavors on that one, little strawberries and a little daisy. And so they're all a tiny bit different and they're placed a little bit differently. Um, some of them have a little bit of embroidery like that has stems on it. Um, on a couple of them, as you can see, we did kind of like a primitive little XXX and then the word needles. We did that on two of them and not on two. Again, if you love to do a little bit of handwork, that's a fun little addition to add. But if that is not your thing or that intimidates you, don't worry about it. Finish it off without that. There's a great opportunity to do little different design choices on here. You could really get as creative as you want. So for this one, um, Kimberly's favorite one was the fox face. So we're doing the fox face today. Um, if I'm lucky, I'll finish it all and I'll get to give it to her at the end. Um, so there's the, the needle book itself. And what you're going to do is that point, you're going to now choose your applique. So this is the step at which you would add that. And I'm going to show you how to finish off the needle book first. And then I'm going to go back to some tips on how I do that wool applique at the end, just so that we can move through the process right now. So pretend that that applique is already on there because this is the step you'd want to do it while it's flat and it's really easy to work with. It's much harder later on when you finished it. So you're going to do whatever embellishment you want to it at this point. And then you're going to take then your piece of lining or the inside and you're going to lay it onto your front or your needle case, the actual basically just exactly like that. It should match right up and you're going to sew it. I would leave the opening on the back somewhere. So maybe on the here or uh, over here, not on the front. So you can have a nice clean finish on the front. So somewhere on the back of your needle, if you look under again, this is the back of your needle book. I mean, stitch it all the way around 
I'm gonna leave a tiny little bit of opening and I'm gonna flip the whole thing inside out or right side out. Um, I might wanna clip the edges a little bit. Um, another, um, I'm gonna do that in a second and come back, but something I wanted to show you real quick too is if you can see the book here, I curved the edges. Um, there's like, there's not really a big technique to do that. I literally just drew a little curve on the edge and then so that I would get the exact same curve. Okay, this is like a super technical way, are you ready? I took the little piece of fabric that was left over from that curve, I put it over here and then I did it. I put it over here and then I did it. How's that for like a super complicated technique? Um, if you don't wanna curve your edges cause you don't wanna bother with it and just have a little straight edge, that's good too, doesn't matter. Again, totally up to you in terms of design, but this would be the time to do it. If you wanna do that, curve around. If you wanna have straight, do straight. And I'll be back in a second to show you how to finish off the inside pages. Okay, so what I've done is I sewed that lining on like I showed you. I left a little opening. I turned the whole thing inside out. And on this one, I didn't curve the edges. I mean, they still look slightly curved because of the, um, all the, you know, the stuff that's in there. So I just wanted you to see the difference. And then I basically top stitched it all the way around the booklet. And then at the same time, I closed the opening as I was top stitching. And then I took two stitches down the sides of the spine, one and two. I didn't do any more in here, because as you'll see in the next step, that gets taken care of when we're adding the pages. But I did do one on each side so that it was a nice finished feel. So now you've got a stitch all the way around and then two stitches there. This is what it looks like on the inside of your book. And what you're gonna do as your last step is you've got your three pieces. I chose those three colors. Um, and it tells you all the sizes and everything in the pattern. And you're gonna do three of them. And you're basically gonna, what you're gonna do is they're both, the, all three of them, actually that's not true. Take that back. You're gonna do them one at a time. So you're gonna take one and you're gonna fold it in half and you're going to basically center it in the middle of your booklet. And you're gonna kind of, in your head, you're gonna divide that little center spine, there's about that much of it left in between those two stitches into three little sections because you're gonna sew three of these little booklet sets. So the way that I literally, like in my head, I look at that and I go one, two, three. So the first one is gonna go right here a little bit to the left of the center is another way you can do it is you can kind of divide it in your head in the middle and then this one's gonna go off to the center, one's gonna go in the center and one's gonna go to the right of the center. So this one, but I do start the stitch all the way at the top of the booklet and then I stitch all the way down that piece and then that gets folded over and then I'm gonna put in my next set of pages. I'm gonna fold them in half to find the center piece you can press it if you really want to be able to see where that is well. Right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it so I can show you how it's done. And this, this one will be in the center. It's the second one. So you're going to find your center mark and you're going to start right at the top and you're going to go all the way down. And then you're going to fold that one out of the way. And you're going to do your last one. And you're going to do it a little bit to the right of center. You're going to fold it in the middle. and then you're going to put that in there and you're going to start at the top and go all the way down. Now, one thing that I found as I was adding these is that the wool, it really wants to, it moves. It moves down with your needle, uh, with your, yeah, with the needle in your machine. So you can do a couple of things. You can put on a walking foot if you have one and you're familiar with those. You can pin this well so it doesn't shift down. Um, those are probably the two things. I, pinning would be, um, it's probably what I did because I doubt that I took the time to put my walking foot on but you know, you could do that too. So you put that on there and then that gets folded over too. And then what that looks like at that point, if you've got three sets of pages that you have stitched on there and at the same time, you've added three little stitches to the spine. And what that looks like is like that. Now that's not a really great example. Don't look at that one. They're not very even. Let me find one that's more even. Yeah. All right, we'll go with this one, okay? So you've got one stitch right there, the first one, the middle one, and the one on the outside. Okay, don't look too close. <laughs> but what that does on the inside of the book is you've got your first set of pages, then you've got your center set, which is basically right in the center, and you've got your third set. And what you're gonna do at that point 
is you can take either, I've got these scallop shears that are for scrapbooking that I love. Um, pinking shears would also work beautifully and give you a little pinked edge. And you're basically gonna take one set of, of the wool pages, you're gonna hold them up together on the side that's still straight at that point, and you're going to trim them at the same time, the both, one, the both sides. And you're gonna basically either pink or scallop and then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna lift that one up and you're gonna have a straight edge here still and you're gonna scallop them across or pink them. And you're gonna do the same thing with the third set. And again, that's not necessary. You could leave them all straight, but it's nice to have that little decorative design on there. And that's pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, your needle book. You've got your three little pinked, and like I was saying before, these are different colors in here, but um, like I was saying before, you could absolutely do a little bit of embroider, add some little buttons, add any kind of little decorative way to personalize that. I've got three needles in here just to show you. You can put in a ton of needles if you want to. Um, you could add more, you could really add more pages. There's room in here in this size needle book. I'd say you could probably easily add two more and just scoot them closer together when you're sewing if you have a lot of really specialty needles that you use. But that, um, is the end of how to construct the needle book. So hopefully you believe me when I told you at the beginning that that was pretty straightforward. Um, let me give you a few little tips for how I do um, some of my wool applique. So there's a couple little components of things that you would need to do if you're gonna do the, um, the applique on top of it. So I like to use freezer paper to trace all of my, um, my shapes. And so in the pattern, you've got all the different little shapes that you're gonna need for that. And I trace them all to freezer paper. So here we just, we're doing the fox face. And so I've got the fox face, the little outside part, and the little ear. And I'm just gonna show you right here how I do that. So I basically, I've got the little shape. I usually, um, just on these tiny, tiny shapes, I leave it bigger and I cut the paper and the wool at the same time. Um, it's much easier to cut the tiny pieces like that. I don't do that for the big pieces, but I do for the little ones. And so I literally, just gonna cut out the shape, the paper, the same time I'm cutting out the wool. Um, and that's simply for ease. And so it's not necessary. And I wouldn't necessarily make three of these flowers and cut them each out, because I usually only, you can reuse. The thing I love about freezer paper is you can reuse the template over and over and over again till it basically stops having sticky powers. So I would just cut that out. And the next time I make a flower, since for this design I need three, flowers, I would just go ahead and use the one that's already cut out. But for this first one, it helps me. And then I just peel it off. And I've got my little flower that I'm going to end up positioning down here. And then I would use this one and I would do it two more times. I would just press that right to that. And it's this, the freezer paper is sticky on one side. And with wool, you can't use them as long because they lose their stickiness faster than on fabric applique. But if it still sticks, I'll use it. And if it doesn't, I'll make another one. And then if I can still use it a third time, I will. And if I can't, I'll, make, I'll trace another one. But that's what I would do to make the three flowers. And I've already done these. So um, the other things I would use is right now, since I'm working with the wool, I love the opportunity to use the wool threads. You can obviously also use floss. You can use cotton threads but um, this is a good chance for me to work with my wool thread, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna basically take my little fox face, I'm gonna position him where I want him to be, kind of off center, and I'm gonna use my Roxanne's glue based it, which I love, comes in the bigger bottles and these little ones, and I'm just going to, actually I'm gonna take these pieces off first. And I'm basically just gonna do little glue dots, ooh, a lot of that came out at once, but that's okay, right around the outside, that's about as far in as I need to go, and that's about all that I need to put on. I'm gonna then position my little fox face. Put that on there. That's all the glue that I will need, and I'm gonna go ahead and put on these little pieces too, the ones that actually are on the face, because I only wanna stitch through these once. And I don't wanna stitch the whole face on and then stitch another piece on again. So this little bottom of his face I'm going to just position right along the shape and wool is fairly movable so I'm just going to kind of position that so that it falls right on the very edge of my face and then I would do the same thing with the little ears 
And then if I've got the flower that needs to go on there, actually that one I would do at the end because I don't need it for the stitching. So I would basically have that for my next step. And so for this one, I'm gonna do the little face part first. And so I just got the caramel wool, which happens to be a perfect match. Funny how that happened, huh? And I've got chenille needles. Um, there's probably several different sizes that you could use, but what's most important right here is that you have an eye that's big enough for your wool thread. There are other needles that you could use. If you've got like one of those old fashioned um, classic little needle threaders, you can use that and put basically as long as the needle, as long as the hole is wide enough to get that thread in there. And I would just knot it once at the end. Okay. And so um, remember as when I told you in terms of the needle book, this is the part that you would do before you did all of this. So for right now, I'm going to do it on here so that you can see it, but I would have done this step before I pieced the whole book. And so since at that point I will just have been on my fleece, I'll go up through the back side. And I'm not a hand a needle worker by, by trade or it's not my specialty and so I just kind of dabble in it. So I'm not sure that my techniques are necessarily the best, but what I do I don't really have the patience for the blanket stitch, although I love the way it looks. And if someone is helping me out, they do a lovely blanket stitch for me. But what I do is just a simple whip stitch when I work with wool. So I'm gonna bring it in from the bottom, just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch in, and I'm gonna come out on the outside. And then I'm basically just gonna take a bite underneath. And it's really just a simple whip stitch. It's gonna come under and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take that bite every time. I'm basically gonna go straight across from it into the background. I'm gonna come up underneath. Oops, and that happens all the time. It gets stuck and you just have to bring it over. And you don't wanna, the trick with um, the wool is you don't wanna pull it really tight because you're gonna basically pull that all the way through your wool. So you wanna keep it not loose, not tight. Again, just straight outside that stitch, tiny bit of an eighth of an inch, maybe over. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. I would do that on the whole head. I would stop on the other end and I would switch to a cream thread and do that bottom portion cream. And so without the extra time and skill, perhaps, for those of you who are just starting out of having to do the blanket stitch, which does look very pretty, don't get me wrong, you can basically work with wool with very little, what I would call pre-training. Um, so basically that's what you would do. You would just stitch all the way around. And the difference in appearance is if we wanted to look, the blanket stitch takes a bite in and then it does, it has a little, basically the portion that goes around the outside. So you go in and then you loop your thread and you go and you keep going. So it creates a little bit more of a finished edge um, but don't let, if you don't know how to do that, don't let that stop you from working with wool because you really only need to do the whip stitch. That's all that you need to know how to do in order to do wool applique. And that's what I would do all the way around there. And I would do, the, like I said, the cream on the bottom. Let me move that over here. Um, in terms of the other stitches on here, this is a simple satin stitch, which just means it's one stitch right after the other, right after the other, just looping all the way to make that little nose. And then this is just a simple, this is basically just one little tiny bite and then around. This is just a stem stitch, what's in embroidery it's called. It's basically one thread is just looped into the next one for any of this little embellishment. And again, if you enjoy handwork, that's a fun little addition to make, but it's absolutely not necessary if you don't enjoy that or you don't know how to do it. And that's the end of your book. And you've got a fun little needle case that you can use take with you, have be in your studio next to your machine, give as wonderful little gifts that are fun to make. And I sure hope that you, um, that this looks like something that you might be able to try and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for joining me.